Hello everyone, welcome to software testing online training by softwaretestinghelp.org. In this today's <clears throat> demo session, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, three topics. One is introduction to instructor, roadmap of the entire course, and then today's demo session overview. I'll be taking one of the topic for today's demo session and then uh, talk about that particular topic. So let's start with the uh, first one, introduction to instructor. So let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Ashok, having 13 years of experience in software industry as a uh, software test manager, uh, presently working as a software test manager in India. And out of 13 years, uh, I was in North America for two years and worked at the client location. Apart from this 13 years in the software industry, I also have three plus years of training experience as a trainer, which I do for online trainings. So overall, 16 years of experience into my profile, 13 years into software testing, and the three plus years into software training. This is just brief about my profile. And moving on, roadmap of, roadmap of the entire code. So, so before talking about the roadmap of the entire course, for whom this uh, course is targeted for. So the participants of this uh, training can be um, either from a graduate or a B or B.Tech graduates who completed their graduation or just finished their B or B.Tech, who would like to start their career in software industry as a software tester can go for choosing this training. And also for the guys who are into non-IT background and would like to change their career into IT background as a software tester, even they also can choose for <clears throat> this particular course as a software testing. Also, uh, the guys who are already into software industry, working into software testing or uh, are working into software development and would like to re-enhance their skills into software testing, even those guys also can enroll for this particular software testing course. Basically, uh, this course we uh, we have planned for uh, five weeks. The total course tenure we actually planned for five weeks. And we, we are planning to have um, three weeks, uh, sorry, um, three days per week, okay? And we'll be having classes three days uh, per week. That would be uh, Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. So we are planning to have three classes per week that on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And this class is basically planned for two hours per day. And we plan to have every session two hours per each day. And out of these two hours, we'll plan for one hour, 30 minutes, we'll have a discussion on the particular topic. And remaining 30 hours, uh, we'll be using that last 30 minutes of our time for the clarifications of the questions, whatever you guys are having. It would be like questions and answers or the clarifications of your doubts based on topic, whatever we have discussed. So we also um, learn uh, by doing the assignments, so I'll be giving an assignment for all of you guys on day-to-day -day activities. So I'll be also reviewing the assignments that will be done by you and also use this 30 minutes of time for providing a feedback on the assignments that are being uh, given to you for the discussion. So this course basically will have participants from uh, all the combinations like uh, the guys who are fresh graduates, and the guys who are have experience in non-IT background and uh, also we have the guys who are already into IT background and would like to change the career to software testing or re-enhance their skills into software testing. So here we'll be starting this with the fundamentals of uh, with the strong fundamentals and then move on to the advanced with the real-time practical experience. Okay. And this course uh, is, as said, is targeted for uh, five weeks. So I'm just trying to, you know, show you guys the schedule, how we actually plan for five weeks and what are we trying to cover in each week. So the week one, so we are planning to talk about 
SDLC models. So what is SDLC? SDLC is nothing but software development lifecycle. Um, software industry has its own you know, development lifecycle and it has their own model. So SDLC is nothing but where exactly the software is going to start and what are the <clears throat> phases of the software in each phase what we are going to do and what are the different models of SDLC what we have we are going to discuss about them under the week one in the SDLC in SDLC also we have so many different SDLC models we'll talk about uh, each and every SD models like a waterfall model V model agile, agile model and what is the difference between each model and which model is the best suit for uh, type of the nature of the project you guys are working on and also we'll work on we'll talk about stlc stlc is uh, nothing but software testing life cycle where you know uh, stlc is one of the part of stlc itself so we'll talk about what is software testing life cycle and what are the different phases we have and how do we plan for the testing activities under stlc and we also talk about different kinds of testing what are the different kinds of testings we do and we also talk about test planning so how to create <clears throat> how to create a test plan and what are the uh, components in the test plan what we write in test plan we also talk about the test planning in the week one on week two we talk about test documentation like what are the documentation that you guys have to prepare for the testing test environment setup so why we need to have a separate environment for the testing so what is exactly the environment and uh, how many different types of environments we have and uh, what is the difference between each environment we also will talk about uh, the test environment part and we also talk about that what is test data why we need test data okay and how to plan for having a uh, master test data sheet and how do we manage it and how do we distribute it across the teams to use the test data and we also talk about uh, test cases what are the different test cases uh, methodologies we have what is the test case what it contains and why do we need to write a test case and you know what are the different methodologies to write the test case we'll talk about that and then we'll also talk about entire flow of test execution so what is test execution when to start the test execution and how to plan the test execution planning and all the stuff also we'll talk about in the week two session coming on week three we'll talk about uh, test reporting metrics what are the reports that are generally used uh, in the testing to you know uh, update the management about the testing what's going on and what is the status of test execution how many bugs found how many bugs are opened like that we'll talk about in detail about the test reporting and what are the different metrics that we we follow and we also talk about the defect management this is the most important thing as well in the testing so what is a defect and then how to raise a defect how to test the defect you know all these things we'll talk about in the defect management and then we also talk about traceability matrix how are we tracing our you know testing from against the requirements we'll also talk about the traceability matrix so and as i said the test environment we have different environments um, we'll talk about uat pre-prod production environment so we'll talk about what is a uat thing about user acceptance test and then pre-prod what is pre-prod what is prod environments and we'll talk about all the different environments why do we need to maintain separate environments in the testing and also we'll talk about uh, in detail about each environment what is uat what is pre-prod and why you need test uat and pre-prod all three or four different environments based on the project and then we also talk about uh, change management change management and other uh, miscellaneous topic anything how do what, what is the change i mean we have something like defect management and change uh, request management so what is the difference between defect and the change request how do we cooperate the change management into the system we'll talk about that under week three on week four uh, we'll be completely moving on to the tools basically now we learn the defect management and all the things now we'll talk about uh, uh, defect management tools like zira and bugzilla 
so when i say you guys get a defect what you do you basically raise a defect you you guys raise a defect in any of the defect management tool so we have something called zira and uh, bugzilla where you guys are going to raise the defect we'll we'll show you in detail how to download zira and how to raise a defect and how to test the defect you know along with the zira and as well as the bugzilla so we'll be using both the tools for the defect management tool and test management tool look uh, tools like uh, test link uh, we'll be talking about test link uh, and any other one of the tool as well for the test management uh, where test management tool basically used for you know storing the test cases requirements storing the test cases and it also used for test execution of your test cases so we'll talk about using one of the tool like test link and we move on with the live project so this course also contains something uh, live project where uh, we give you guys one of the live project and we ask you to you know uh, work as you guys work in the real time environment like in your company when you go to your company and what exactly it starts with your project similarly we'll be trying to give you guys hands on experience before joining the job itself by uh, giving you the live project where you know you understand the requirements you write the test scenarios write the test cases execute them you know and log a defect so this will give you complete hands on with the real time kind of exposure when you actually go to um, the project in your company once you join it would be exact same what we guys do in the project and you guys would be experienced before going to the project with the live project in week 5 um, we also help you guys in preparing the uh, resumes and and as well we also take some mock interviews and we provide guidance on the certification so in resume basically um, what should you guys write in your resume and what you should not write in your resume you know how your resume should look like and what are the certification that is better for you which gives you most weightage for your resume to shortlist i mean to say it would be value added to your uh, resume and we'll also try to help you out on resume preparation and the certification part we also take mock interviews so that you know uh, you guys would be uh, having a kind of experience like you know how to attend the interviews and what type of questions that those guys are going to be Uh, asking it we also provide uh, faqs nothing but frequently asked question basically we cover it in the mock interview itself whatever is needed and also we provide uh, support for every individual once the training is completed or once training is still going on any clarifications that you guys are going on we'll be helping you out in your clarifications whatever you guys are having okay and apart from that anything if you feel we were not able to complete it we'll be catching up it in the week 5 so this is entire uh, course curriculum starts with week 1 to week 5 and uh, as said it basically starts with uh, five week session three days uh, per week tuesday wednesday and thursday two hours per per day so this is about uh, entire road map of our entire codes okay and today's demo before going on to the today's demo uh, let's understand why should i go for software testing help.com so as i said it basically provides uh, training from well experienced working professionals okay and it's completely live hands on training sessions live hands on training session as I said we'll be providing assignments and we'll be reviewing the assignments whatever you guys have done and course content considering the current job market we always uh, uh, you know enhance our course content based on the recent demands in the market so practical assignments at the end of every session uh, we'll be giving the practical assignments at the end of every session also we are giving you the live project as well where you guys will completely get it's a complete pure practical thing that you guys would be learning end to end live project covered like i said uh, software testing life cycle we'll cover you everything whatever is going to happen from sdlc using the live project we also provide course completion certificate once you guys have uh, completed your 
code stating that you guys have uh, completed the code certification from softwaretestinghelp.com. And we also give you uh, ebook and ISTQB a steady guide for free as a bonus. Okay. And you guys can utilize this ebook and ISTQB certification guide for clearing the certification part. You always have video access for your live sessions. Whatever the sessions we are uh, learning here, uh, we'll be recording it and then you guys will always have access to these live sessions whenever you guys would like to you know, uh, listen it again, you guys can just go and use that live sessions videos that are being shared with you. As said, email support for your queries even after the course is completed. Anything that you guys have any clarifications needed, you guys can send an email and we'll respond you back with the clarifications, whatever questions you have. And we also help you in resume preparation, interview guidance uh, sessions also included. As I said, we'll conduct the mock interviews and also help you in the resume preparations. Okay. There are so many reasons why to choose for softwaretestinghelp.com. Okay. And uh, so we just covered introduction to uh, instructor roadmap and why software uh, testing help. And now we'll talk about today's demo session. So, so I would like to talk about types of software testing. So before talking about types of software testing, the first thing um, what I would like to uh, explain you guys is what is software testing basically? So why we need to do a software testing or in simple term, what are the objectives of software testing? So what are the major objectives of software testing and what is software testing? So software testing is a process of executing a program with intention of finding a defect. So it's execution of your program with intent of finding a defect. So what program we are trying to execute? Whatever the program that is written by the developer, we are trying to execute that program with intent to find the defect. So major objective of software testing is finding defects. Okay, what is defect basically? So defect is nothing but anything that is not meeting the requirement. So let's take an example. Client says that his, uh, if if you're working for an ATM testing, let's take an ATM is your application and where the requirement is, client says, if you guys enter wrong pin number more than three times after inserting your card, your account should be locked. So this is what my client requirement is. So what is expected result? When I insert my card, enter wrong pin for more than three times, my account should be locked. But what is happening even after wrong pin entered for more than three times, when I enter fourth time also, my account is not getting locked. So there is a deviation between what is being expected and what is actually it is doing. So wherever you see there is a deviation between the actual result with the uh, expected result, then you're going to call it as a defect. So major intention and objective of the software testing is finding the defect. And second thing is make sure application is meeting with client, client requirement. So make sure client application meeting. When I say uh, whatever client is requesting to us, so we have to make sure that what client is needed, what development team is developed, is meeting the client requirement. So when of the example I just gave, when you entered the pin for more than three times, your account should be locked, whether it's really locking or not. So you have to make sure it is meeting the client requirements as well. And another objective of software testing is to, you know, prevent defects. So. Prevent defects are nothing but we would like to prevent the defect uh, from the end user. We don't want end user would be facing an, uh, defects and you know where we'll be losing the confidence, right? Uh, from the customer's point of view. So we would like to prevent the defects as much as possible so that we don't want any defects to be triggered and we don't want any you know, troubling or issues to be faced by the end user itself. So how are we preventing? We are trying to do the testing 
you know uh, so that as much as possible find the defects and if fix them and retest it and make sure there are no much defects and then client is prevented from the defects with actual users okay so these are the major uh, objectives why uh, we have to do the software testing and also one one more thing is to deliver the quality of the project right so so quality is most important thing in the market in the particularly in competitive market so if you deliver the quality to the client then only you will be you know in the business or you can expect more business from the client so to deliver the quality of the product we have to do the testing so these are the major objectives of the software testing finding the defects and making sure system is meeting the client requirements and prevent the defects and provide the quality of the system with the quality and and coming on to types of software testing there are two types of testing we have one is um, block box testing and another one is white box testing so we have two different types let's talk about the black box testing so if you look at this this diagram here which is completely in the block so black box testing is what you guys do in black box testing you guys just give an input okay your input be given to your program and then the program executes and then it gives you the output so as you guys look at it's completely black box we really don't know what is happening inside the box we really don't know what is happening inside the block box we only know what input we have to give and what output i supposed to get uh, like an example if you guys take an example of calculator right so let's say i have a calculator and where i just enter some two numbers 20 plus 20 right and then i would just hit on equal to so i'm getting a 40 but i really don't know what is happening inside the calculator how it is calculating what technology they have used what is the coding logic that these guys have implemented to develop this calculator it's a pure black box to us so whatever you see is in the front end is the place where you guys give some input and then you expect the output based on the in input that you are providing so you really don't know what is happening consider this is as your calculator and you are entering some two numbers for addition and you are giving that input you expect the output if you enter 20 plus 20 and your output should be 40 so this is what we are going to do in black box testing in simple term we really don't know internal architecture of the program what is the logic that these guys have i mean when i say these guys what is the logic that development team has written to implement Uh, to the system we we really don't know we just bother about what to give an input and what to verify in the output so if you guys look at in the white box testing it's completely reverts to the black box testing you guys can uh, easily understand now when i say it reverts to the black box in black box you really don't know what is happening inside the black box but in when it comes to the white box testing you you really need to know what is happening inside the box nothing but you need to look at the code and what is the logic that is being written you need to do the code reviews and uh, understand the architecture of the application also you need to understand um the technology on which technology the application is implemented until unless you don't know the technology it won't be that much easy to understand the coding that is written so we we are majorly responsible for uh, doing the black box testing but now the trend is slowly is changing we may be future needed to do the white box testing as well in some situations if you are already aware about the technology in which application is developed then it's good to go with doing the white box testing as well because you are already aware like say application is developed in java i, I am pretty good in java then it is good if you can go and do the white box testing as well so this is about uh, types of software testing okay and moving on to software testing life cycle so as said um, 
STLC is nothing but software testing life cycle where it basically it, it starts so software uh, testing life cycle basically uh, part of SDLC as said um, let's take an uh, example here uh, let's talk about SDLC before talking about STLC. SDLC is nothing but software development life cycle and uh, here uh, how the software development life cycle starts. So basically it starts with uh, you know understanding the understanding the requirements okay and uh, then preparing the SRS document. I'll explain you guys each and everything, whatever I'm typing here. And then preparing the SRS, then design, coding, then testing. So here, understanding the requirement, preparing the SRS document nothing but software requirement specification so understanding the requirements is nothing but when you guys are starting in a project first you need to understand what are the requirements that the client is expecting to develop from us so first go and meet the client and understand the requirement what exactly you wanted to develop you guys for uh, designing his application so and then once you guys have understand what exactly client is looking for then put all the requirements in the document which we call it as SRS software requirement specification document so who is responsible for right so who is the actor here so actor would be BA B business BA is nothing but business analyst so business analyst role is uh, he has to go and meet the client and understand the client requirement what he is basically looking out for and then put all those requirements in a particular document called SRS software requirement specification this would be generally a MS Word document or it could be a, um, a PDF file where you guys would be putting all the requirement specification in that and then it goes on for for understanding requirements and preparing SRS document both are done by the business analyst itself and next one is designing so what are we trying to design here you try to design the architecture of the application so who will be responsible for this one is uh, architect who will be the responsible for this designing part and once the application is designed and then you guys go for coding so who will be responsible for writing the coding to meet uh, the client requirements is nothing but the development team. So development team starts writing the coding. Once the development team completes the preparation of the application and then testing would, would start. So as you all guys are here for into the testing, so we are responsible here. So we are responsible for testing the application to make sure what uh, all these things to make sure to, to find a defect to make sure it's all whatever we talked about or the four things here is responsibility of the tester so once testing is done and then we would call it as a maintenance so who is responsible for maintenance i would say support team support or uh, operations team what we call okay so maintenance team uh, would be responsible once we test it everything is working fine then we'll 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 say that just move it into the production so this is what the sdlc is nothing but software development life cycle starts with understanding the response of uh, understanding the requirements and then prepare the document it's a role of the business analyst to do and then the designing comes into the next phase and where the architect is the guy who will be writing the designing designing the architect once the architect is completed then you guys would go for i mean development team will go on writing the coding and 
then once the coding is completed we start with the testing and then it goes on to the maintenance part now coming on to our part as a tester we have to plan testing how we have to do right so software testing life cycle we just looked at uh, SDLC nothing but software development life cycle as said test life cycle is one of the part under the SDLC now what are we going to consider in the software testing life cycle okay so what we start with the software test life cycle basically we start with uh, uh, we start with I'm just trying to explain you guys uh, about STLC okay it starts with you know uh, test planning so we try to initially start with the test planning so what is test planning contains it's a, again I said it's a document where uh, you guys write what are you going to test what are you guys not going to test what is in scope and what is out of scope okay and compatibility testing details when I say compatibility testing are we need to uh, test do we need to test this application only in Windows operating system or do we need to test this application in mobile also like iOS Android operating system is that in scope for us or not in scope that that also will be writing it and what are the browsers if it is a browser compatibility uh, application if what are the browsers that we guys have to uh, use you know is it only fine with the Chrome or do you want it to use it in Internet Explorer what are the browsers that client is expecting us to do the testing when to stop testing you know uh, when to start testing and everything about environment details also we are going to write it here okay basically in order simple to say it contains what is scope what is out of scope for scope is an example like say client says to test it in windows operating system and uh, he says that i don't need to it to be tested in ios so in scope of testing is the windows operating system and out of scope would be all operating systems apart from windows in some situation there could be different vendors also involved in testing like company a and company b the client is given it for two companies to testing like say module one is given to company a and module two is given to the company b and if you guys are preparing a test plan for company a you would say module two is not in your scope of the testing in scope out of scope that what you guys are going to uh, write in test planning okay and you guys also will be writing here entry criteria and as well as exit criteria so what do you mean by entry criteria when we should be able to do the when we should start the testing what are the things it should qualify in writing the starting the testing what is the exit testing so exit testing is nothing but when you guys have to say release it to the production so we are done thorough testing and not found much defects everything looks fine and typically that would be writing it in the exit criteria however since it's a demo i cannot put everything about the test planning so i'm just trying to brief you guys on the test planning so after test planning um, now every individual tester will start understanding the srs document srs is nothing but software requirement specification document as said where you guys would be writing i mean business analyst would be writing all the requirements whatever is uh, client is looking for so here what you guys will be doing uh, doing is uh, understanding understanding the requirements and then once you understand the requirements you once you start reading the requirements you will obviously get some questions raise questions slash your doubt or whatever clarification so you guys get in a requirement and you go through the requirement document you guys would get in a you know um, clarification let's take in the same example if you insert your ATM card in ATM enter wrong pin for more than three times and your account should be locked but they didn't talk about anything when account would be activated now i entered pin wrong time three times wrong 
so it is log is it log only for 24 hours or do i need to visit to the bank to activate what is the process to activate it or does it would be activated on its own after 24 hours so like this you guys would always get some questions when you guys understand start reading this rs document so once you guys have um, understand the software requirement specifications once your doubts are clarified then the third step would be we will be writing test scenarios test scenarios test cases okay so you whatever you guys have understood from the requirement specification document and then you guys go ahead and start writing the test scenarios test scenario let's take an example if you wanted to test the login functionality of your application let's say yahoo is your application and where you guys would like to um, you know test the application whether it's logging in successfully or not so you guys can create one test scenario which is called uh, verify login functionality under the test scenario you guys would be writing couple of test cases okay and once test scenario and test cases are uh, prepared so what are we going to write let's take an example under test scenarios as said uh, login um, i would write one test scenario saying that verify login so this is what my scenario is under this i'll be writing one test case enter valid user id and password this is one test case second test case enter valid user id and wrong password like this i would keep on writing the test cases for one test scenario so maybe a little bit confusing what is the test scenario and test case so for every requirement like say login is one of the requirement from the client so for every requirement you guys would write one test scenario so i have one test scenario where one requirement is to verify the login so i would write one test scenario which is called verify login and for this i would write multiple test cases so one scenario can contain multiple test cases verify valid user id and valid password is given you are able to log in successfully that's one test case another test case verify uh, valid user id and uh, given but password is wrong what should behave so like this you guys would keep on writing the test scenarios under the test cases and the fourth one would be uh, test execution and the next step what you guys would be doing is test execution so what you guys would be doing in test execution is once the application is ready for you guys to test it you take all these test cases or test scenarios whatever you have uh, taken and start executing them on your application then once you start executing the application you guys always see some defects like say um, after entering the valid user id and valid password system still not allowing you to log in it's a defect though you are giving right user id and right password if the system is still not allowing you to log in it's a defect then you just go for raising defects so once you guys raise a defect then defect team development team will fix it retest the defect and do take the decision go slash no go go no go is nothing but is the application is is really ready to go to the production if you say it's ready to go if it is not ready to go you always say no go so it will not be you know deployed to the production so this is how uh, the testing life cycle what what we do in day to day activities as a tester this is what is being given here so it starts with test planning uh, test planning basically contains to brief it contains scope out of scope entry criteria exit criteria and there are a lot of other things we'll discuss in detail when we write we also write a test plan as said we'll give you live project we'll write a test plan for that live project and then understand the client requirements so in the document that is given to you is srs and then raise your questions doubts and clarifications and then go ahead writing the test scenarios execute them and raise the defect defect as said if anything the actual result is 
not meeting with the expected result then you guys can go ahead and raise the defects once the defects are fixed it retest the defects and then make a decision go and no basically go and no go decision will be taken by your test manager okay so thanks guys for all your uh, time i hope uh, this session uh, would be helpful to you to uh, decide on choosing your career in in it software testing and start participating in this particular training thank you so much guys and we'll we'll catch up in the next sessions